Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery who you've seen me review a good number of beers from before. And these guys are a brewery who are getting a lot of plaudits at the moment and quite rightly so in my experience. So for this one, we are going to go to Nora, which is a little bit to the north of Örebro, which is a bigger city that you'll find out to the west of Stockholm. And we're having a look at another beer from Apex Brewing Company. So this one is the Scarab, which is a session IPA coming in at 5% ABV. So I think this is actually the lowest alcohol beer that I've had from Apex before. So really curious to see how this one turns out. As I've said, these guys are very, very good when it comes to the hazy IPAs in my experience. So hopefully this is another good one and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. Really curious to see what this has in store for us. This beer was released in Sistembolaga on the 1st of May 2020 through the uh, Lokal Osmoskolit assortment and uh, it was released along with another one, the Zenith IP, which you'll see me review in a few videos time. You will also see three other beers from Apex Brewing this month. So you will see a lot of beers from this brewery uh, in quite quick succession actually. But uh, hopefully you enjoy the reviews. I'm very curious to see what this one has in store for us. And like I say, if you're interested in Swedish beer, this is a brewery that you definitely want to check out, particularly if you are a fan of the hazy IPAs. These guys are getting plaudits all across Europe at the moment. So uh, yeah, definitely check check out this brewery. So yeah, looking forward to this one and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Apex Brewing before. There must be about eight or so of them there now. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to constantly and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Apex Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So Apex Brewing Company are based in Nora, to the north of Örebro, which again you'll find out to the west of Stockholm, and they were founded back in 2017 by Daniel Gatchets and Nicholas Lundgren, and both of these guys are musicians, with Nicholas having played in the band 59 Times the Pain, and Daniel playing in the band Voice of a Generation. So Daniel and Nicholas are responsible for the brewing operations, but there are a few others in the company as well. This is Leif Carlson, Ola Eriksson, and Roger Helm, and these guys started off with a very small 500 litre brew kit, with six different fermentation tanks and they were selling their beers initially in the local area before they got them into Sistembolaga. Over the last few years they've basically scaled up and in 2018 they brewed around 35,000 litres of beer per year with about 25 different varieties, all of which were pretty much IPAs. I don't think these guys have ever really brewed a stout that they've released and um, but they plan they were planning over the course of 2019 to reach 100,000 litres of beer per year. But as of May 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced 85 different varieties of beer, according to Untapped. And I think in the case of this brewery, that number is probably pretty accurate because these guys, uh, I think Untapped has been around for a fair number of years when these guys have started up. But like I said to you, this is a brewery that's very well renowned for its IPAs, pretty much all they brew. Uh, is hazy New England IPAs and uh, you know that's where they're, they seem to be making their money so who can blame them for sticking with what they're good at these guys are doing some very very uh, interesting stuff at the moment I've had some really good beers from these guys over uh, over the last little while I forget the names of all the different beers that I've had but the original um, single hop um, was a very very nice one so that's one that is very readily available through Sistembolaga so if you are watching from Sweden I recommend that you have a go at that one but pretty much any hazy IPA you'll get from these guys is likely to be very very good I'd love to see them have a go at a black IPA or a west coast IPA like a properly old school caramelly west coast IPA I think that would be a really nice um, that would be a really 
very very nice review to have uh, to, to do for you here on the channel. I always like trying different styles from breweries that are famous for uh, are well known and respected for one thing. So a nice West Coast IPA or uh, a Black IPA or even an Imperial Stout from these guys I think would be interesting and it's always good because when you get breweries like this who are very good in one style they really are very kind of nitpicky and anal and stuff like that when it comes to releasing other beer styles. Brewski up in Helsingbori they're another good example of a, a brewery that really um, are very picky when it comes to uh, what beers and stuff they release. Their Imperial Stouts always tend to be pretty damn good actually. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Apex Brewing for the moment. Definitely one of the Swedish breweries to check out over the next little while if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to learn about all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. To tell you, so to tell you the stats about this beer, this one is a 5% session New England IPA. It's hopped with Citra, Mosaic and Victoria's Secret so it should give us, you know, these are hops we all know. Citra we know gives us a lot of nice mangoes and tropical fruit complexity. Mosaic is quite a nice tangerine orange one and Victoria's Secret is like the little sister of, um, you know, the Galaxy hops. So quite a bit of passion fruit and some other tropical fruits in there as well. It's got a malt base of Maris Otter Pale, or I think it was Maris Otter Extra Pale, um, naked oats and also some torrified wheat. So a very simple malt base but very effective in my experience and it uses WLP 066 um, which is a London fog yeast strain. So um, yeah this one I think will be very interesting. As I say the lowest alcohol beer that I've had from these guys as far as memory is telling me. I hope I'm not lying to you but yeah I think this is the lowest alcohol beer that I've had from uh, Apex over the last little while. The Zenith that you'll see me review in a few videos time I think is like 6.2 or 6.5 I forget but yeah curious to see what these guys can do in terms of a session IPA but like I said this beer was released in the May lot of uh, Lokal Osmoska Lead Assortment in Seestembo Lagat and I think it was available on Glass Bank and Punkt SA for a little bit uh, before that but yeah as you can see it has the typical Apex Brewing artwork there. They basically just changed the animal on the top of the kind of Illuminati thing there that they have. I do like the artwork that these guys have. There you can see Scarab IPA, 5% ABV and there you can see the address of the brewery as well, Nora. So you can go and stock them if you like. But yeah, nicely presented. I wonder what the reason for choosing Scarab for this one is. I know the Scarab was a, a very significant symbol I think in Middle Eastern culture back in the Egyptian times if I remember right um, so yeah I wonder what the reason for them choosing Scarab for this one is. They don't really say that much that's the one thing I wish that they would do is write a little bit on the side of their cans actually but uh, yeah nice brewing nice uh, nicely presented beer this one again pretty much the artwork is a similar style in all of them but you'll just get different colours depending on what beer it is. So yeah let's have a little look at this beer then we'll get it out and we'll get it into the glass oh yeah so this one as you can see is going to be very very pale in terms of color really bright yellow actually that looks really nice actually almost kind of similar to like a German Helles or a wheat beer almost looks like a wheat beer that to be quite honest with you so uh yeah, I like that. As you can see with this one then, it's poured a very, very pale yellow, almost, as I say, almost kind of similar to like a Belgian wit in terms of its colour. I don't know if I've had one that is quite this pale, but I mean, the thing is, this one is lower in alcohol, so it's not going to be quite as hazy. I have had like double IPAs and stuff that are this colour, but they look a lot more kind of soupy and gloopy. But of course, as you go higher up the alcohol chain and stuff, there's more oats, there's more wheat, so the beer will be gradually more hazy. So that's probably why this one looks kind of as pale as it does. You know, it does look a little bit less hazy than some of the ones you will find within this uh, this category, of course. But you could see there was about a quarter to a half finger of a frothy, kind of, well, more bumpy white head, to be honest with you. That's just fading away to be a very thin foamy layer now. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this one. It still is pretty hazy, but it's not the kind of thickest and soupiest, gloopiest type of uh, New England IPA that you're going to come across, but definitely one that is leaning towards the lighter end of the spectrum. Even if you shine a little bit of light through this, um, you know, the, the yellow colour doesn't become too rich. It is a very, very pale looking beer, this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. You can see a steady stream going up towards the uh, the bottom of the head there. But, you know, overall, 
it does look pretty damn nice, I have to say. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look at this one then and see how we get on. Ooh, that's quite interesting. This one, to me, it smells a little bit more farmhousey than I remember some of the um, some of the other ones from uh, from Apex before. But that said, I think I actually commented on that with the last one. Was that the Simcoe and Mosaic? I forget what, hop, what um, hops it was. The last one I had from Apex was a double IPA, if I remember rightly, and it was Simcoe and something. Um, but yeah, the uh, aroma on this one is quite interesting. So it does, the yeast is giving it a really kind of farmhousey thing, and I don't really remember the London Fogs being kind of farmhousey like that, so maybe it's one of the types of grains that they're using. But Maris Otter was always quite a bready, grainy kind of uh, malt, but it always had a little bit of nice biscuit to it. So I'm not sure exactly where the things are coming from this. It could be the wheat, right enough. Um, but yeah, there's definitely an element of that kind of slightly um, grainy, farmhousey, woody type note to this beer. That's kind of interesting, but maybe that's one of the trademarks of um, of Apex, because I think this isn't, this isn't the first beer from them that I've said this about. So yeah, definitely a little hint of a kind of very light hint of a vegetal uh, herbal, earthy, woody kind of thing coming out of the, the back of the nose here. Um, other than that, you do get some of the kind of more pungent wheaty notes. It's got a the wheat has a little bit of an astringency to this one. Um, you do get some of the, there's not, there's a little bit of oatiness, but there's not really too much, in my opinion, in the malt base here. But you also, when you take the aroma in a bit more deeply, you do get some very nice um, kind of biscuity notes out of this one, which I, I very much like. So, um, yeah, the aroma of this beer, I think, is really, it's pretty damn nice, actually. I like how all of this, um, I really like how this goes together, to be honest with you. This has got a very, very nice, um, it's got a very nice edge to it. So, um, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the, uh, the malt base of this. It definitely gets a bit smoother and a bit sweeter the more you, uh, the more that you, you, you smell it, actually. So that some of the sort of farmhousey type notes that I was describing, um, do go down a little bit. On the hoppy side of things then, which is where the focus should be with one of these IPAs, um, there is a good little bit of floral aromaticity to this one. It's quite bright. Um, yeah, it does have a nice little bit of that. I mean, all of the hops in this one, Citra, if I remember right, is around 13, 12-13% alpha acid. Victoria's Secret, I can't remember, is that around 13? 12 or 13 as well and then mosaic is usually about 14 if I remember correctly and um, so all the hops that are in this are going to give you a little bit of a nice big kind of floral aromaticity you get a little bit of earthiness out of the mosaic as well and you can definitely <clears throat> pick that up at the um, at the back of the beer too but mainly the green side of the hops are quite floral on this one there's a nice little bit of lighter grassiness and it's got some it's got a nice little bit of citrusy zest to it the aroma of this one, but then when you, you look at the aroma a bit more deeply, it does start to lean towards the tropical side of things. So a nice little bit of a uh, nice little bit of a passion fruity note, some lighter kind of mangoes, papayas and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's definitely got a nice little bit of um yeah it's definitely got a nice little bit of that lighter kind of juicy tropical kind of thing there which is um which is good, yeah. So a little bit of the, there is a wee touch of the darker passion fruit, lighter kind of mangoes, papayas, maybe a little bit of pineapple, to be honest with you as well. Um, am I getting the kind of tangerine oranges out of this? Yeah, no, definitely. There are, at the front of the nose, definitely you can pick up that sort of tangerine orange note. But for me, um, if I was smelling this one, I might guess that there's a little bit of centennial or lemon drop or something like that in this because it does, to me, it just has a little bit of a kind of lemony, zesty edge to it, this one. So it smells quite nice. I don't think this is the boldest aroma that I've had from uh, Apex Brewing, but I mean, when it's a session IPA, you are going to, it's, it's, you know, that's kind of what would be expected, to be honest. But it doesn't smell out of place for an Apex beer that makes sense so you know it definitely that's the thing with these session IPAs they're designed to be drinkable but you know they shouldn't really drop back on flavour and things like that actually so bear that in mind but yeah I like the aroma of this one so take a bit of time uh, to enjoy that before you get stuck into it but let's taste this this one is the Scarab IPA a session New England hazy IPA whatever you want to call it from uh, Apex Brewing Company in Nora just to the north of Örebro uh, in Sweden 
So, and just to the, the, the Urebro, out to the west of Stockholm, and uh, a little bit further north of me here in Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. Slangia, Skull. Yeah, um, quite nice. Yeah, definitely a very light, kind of crisp, drinkable sort of thing. I mean, this one has, compared to other session IPAs that I've had, I find this one, it's got a very wet and very kind of crisp mouthfeel to it. And I suppose with the session IPAs, they can kind of go one or two ways. One of the best session IPAs that I had in Sweden recently was the Neblina from uh, Remelouf. Gord's Brewery here in Skåne, in the south of the country. That was that's a really really nice one. And I mean, the I was very impressed with the the GBG Beer Week, the Quake Session Hazy IPA that is that, that you know Spike did for the GBG Beer Week. That's a really good one as well. Um, but this one, this one's actually quite different from those. This one really leans towards that wet kind of crisp end of the. Uh, of the spectrum actually it's almost got a little bit like a kind of laggerish mouthfeel to it which is quite interesting i didn't expect that from this one i thought this was going to be you know quite a i thought it might be a bit lighter but i thought it might be a bit smoother and a bit creamier than this so this is an interesting approach from apex because normally their beers are you know quite uh, you know quite creamy rather than anything else but in recent times i have noticed that some of the brewers in scandinavia are using a little bit of pilsner malt and making their their ipas a little bit crisper and things so um yeah, it's an interesting one, but they did say it was only, what was it, Maris Otter, Extra Pale, Torrified Wheat and, um, you know, Raw Oats or whatever that was in this one, or, or uh, Naked Oats rather. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting point to make about this beer. It does feel very light and very crisp compared to the others I've had from Apex. But I will say to you, the more your tongue adjusts to this one, the more, um, yeah, the more your tongue adjusts to this one, the more you are going to, uh, yeah, you know, the more you are going to really get a bit of a kick out of this one. I like how this goes together. It's very nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. So straight away with this one. You can feel a little bit of the kind of the Maris Otter going right across the middle of the palate. The further you go into the aftertaste, it really does kind of thicken up a little bit. Though you do get feel it getting a little bit more kind of bready and sweeter the further you go into the palate. So the middle of your palate, and um, it almost feels like it's got a little bit of a bowl in it. And at the bottom of the bowl, that's where you're getting the sweeter, more biscuity kind of aspects out of the. Um, that's where you're getting the more kind of biscuity, sweeter aspects out of the. Um, the Maris Otter in this one. When you go towards the back third of the tongue, and um, you've got a wee bit of a kind of wheaty kind of thing, a little bit of a slightly spicy type note. But yeah, in fairness, the wheat isn't actually too astringent or too bitey in my mind. It actually smoothens out really nicely. You do, you can feel it getting a little bit bitey further forward on the tongue, but I do like how, um, I do really like how that goes together, come to think of it, it's, it's pretty spot on, I have to admit, um, yeah, I like the level of crispness and things that you, uh, that you get from that one, it's, this is, this is a really nice session IP, actually, it's just quite different from, uh, from the other ones that I've had, but yeah, the back third of your tongue, quite bready, a little bit wheaty, a little bit bitey, um, but then, yeah, in the middle of the palate, it's got a wee bit of a, kind of sweetness to it, um, quite biscuity like McVitie's Digestive, it's not quite oily and butterscotchy, but then as you move towards the front of that middle third of your tongue, you've got a nice, um, you definitely have a little bit of a nicer, um, pardon me, you definitely have a bit of a nicer kind of oaty creaminess to this one, but the oaty creaminess in this beer I think is quite, um, it's quite minimal compared to their other beers. This beer really is leaning towards the crisper end of the spectrum. The hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the palate, you can really feel that um, that kind of crispness just push, you know, evolving a little bit. As you um, 
you know, as you move further forward on that, you get a nice kind of floral aromaticity out of this one. It is almost a little touch spicy, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not sure if the spiciness is more likely to come from the, the Victoria's Secret, to be honest with you, but there is a little bit of a spiciness to this one, just that it adds to the kind of crispness that the beer has, but then around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy, actually. So I like how this goes together. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm starting to get a wee bit more of the kind of yeasty notes out of this beer now. So yeah, let's focus on that kind of fruity part, let's focus on the front third of the tongue then. So as I always say, you get that little oily bubble where the fruity, juicy esters push their way out of the beer um, at the front part of the palate. And for me, if you go towards the back of that, there is a wee touch of a darker kind of passion fruity. No, it's not quite dark enough to be grapefruit, but that will be both the Victoria's Secret and the um, both the Victoria's Secret and the uh, Citra that are giving you that. But as you come further forward, it does linger a little bit. But then as you get further forward from that, a little bit of mango, a little bit of a, uh, and you get a little bit more of a kind of tangerine orange. As you move further forward on the tongue, as the flavour evolves a bit, there is a wee touch of pineapple to this one. I think that's more likely to be the, um, I think that is more likely to be the. Victoria's Secret that gives you that. Um, but I don't get so much in the way of softer tropical fruits like papayas and stuff like that. To me it's like the back of that third is it's passion fruit, then it's mango, then um, it becomes tangerine and orangey and then on the front of the tongue you do just feel a little bit of a pineapple-y type flavour just evolving from that as you go further into the aftertaste and you do get a wee bit of a kind of citrusy zest on the very kind of front edge of the tongue. You do get a little bit of that mixing with the kind of grassy note that the beer has but overall I think this is a very very nice kind of sessionable IPA so yeah um, this one I think it gets a thumbs up from me I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again um, I don't know that that would be the thing I don't drink so many kind of session IPAs I don't drink very much alcohol at all to be quite honest with you outside of the beer videos I drink very very little unless I'm doing a live stream or whatever but um, yeah, you know, mainly I, uh, I can, if I'm going to have a beer, I want to have like a big beast of a thing. So this one was really nice to try. But I think, you know, if I had, uh, if I was going to drink an Apex beer, I'd probably be, because I don't drink that much, I'd be more inclined to go for one of the regular IPAs or one of the, um, or one of the, the kind of double IPAs. But if you are a sessioner, which I'm not, then uh, this is one I think that you will quite enjoy. So I'd recommend this along with the Niblina from Remaloof Gores Bravery and uh, as I say the GBG Beer Week beer from uh, Spike I thought was uh, was really quite nice actually. A moment of clarity, the one that Beer Blue Tech did for 2017 if I remember right, that was really nice as well. Um, so yeah this one's definitely worth trying. In terms of the mouthfeel, um, You know, it's a fairly light-bodied beer, this one. It's kind of at the top end of light-bodied. The carbonation has a good bit of crispness to it. The mouthfeel overall is pretty wet and pretty crisp. Um, you know, that's really where it leans. In terms of the hoppy bitterness and things, I think this one might be about... I think this might be about 40-ish. 30 or 40-ish. They've maybe given it a bit more bitterness just to... Um, you know, make it feel that little bit more crisp since it's a session IPA. Um, but the mouthfeel overall I think is really wet and crisp rather than anything else. The malt base, um, it does have a degree of sweetness to it, but again, um, I think the further you go into the aftertaste with this, it starts to lean to, a little, to be a little bit more kind of grainy. So it's definitely not the smoothest and um, sweetest of, uh, of malt bases that you're going to find from Apex. But, um, you know, all their beers, their beers are going to be different. They're going to all have their own little quirks and things like that. So, yeah, a little bit more of a grainy, light, crispy type malt base to it. Some nice, um, juicy, fruity notes. Also a little bit of a citrusy, zesty kind of thing with this beer as well. But, um, yeah, as a session IPA, I like this one. It's definitely worth having a go at, actually. So, uh, yeah, thumbs up to Apex for doing something a little bit different with this. I wonder if this beer will be a kind of mainstay of theirs, actually, as a session IPA, so you know, definitely have a go at this one 
if you get the chance and just uh, and see what you think. But I've enjoyed reviewing this one. I look forward to my other Apex beers that I've got coming up as well. You will see the Zenith soon and then there's another three bigger beers to come from these guys very, very shortly. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Apex as well. You will see more videos from these guys very soon and beyond that, I'm sure there will be more IPAs to review from these guys too. Thank you again for watching my reviews and I will catch you guys very, very soon. Slanja, Skull, Kampai, cheers, whatever. Check out this beer, the Scarab IPA from Apex Brewing in Nora to the north of Örebro here in Sweden. Slanja, Skull, check this one out.